What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade for the third week of January in 2019. So for all you out there that don't already know this, the market is actually closed tomorrow, Monday, January the 21st, due to it being Martin Luther King Day. So I'm really taking today, Sunday, and tomorrow, Monday, to really analyze a bunch of different charts, do my technical analysis on different time frames, and really plan out my entire trading week for the week that we do have the shortened week from Tuesday to Friday. And I really recommend you guys out there to do the same if you guys want to get ahead of the game, right? Just because we don't have a trading day tomorrow doesn't mean that you shouldn't be, you know, taking a look at the news, you know, doing your technical analysis, researching stocks, you know, every minute that you spend on an off day is a minute getting ahead of a person that is just taking the day off, right? So it's always important, in my opinion, to, you know, do the charts, you know, do the analysis, do the research on off days, even if we have, you know, a holiday, you know, like tomorrow, Martin Luther King Day. So now that I got that out of the way, you know, we don't have a trading day tomorrow, just a public announcement at the beginning of this video. Before we do start, feel free to smash that like button if you guys do enjoy the content content that I produce here on YouTube. And if you follow me on other different platforms as well, I really do appreciate it. And if you guys do smash that like button, it really does help the channel grow. And again, I appreciate all you guys to the fullest that have been following me, you know, supporting me for the past couple of months. You know, it's been over a year now on YouTube and, you know, I really do appreciate all you guys uh, so much. So let's start and talk about, you know, what am I looking at in terms of stocks? You know, I got some, you know, DMs on Instagram about tickers to cover in this video. So I'm going to be going over those as well towards the end of the video. So let's just get right into it, guys. I don't want this video to be too long. But before we do get into the tickers, let's take a look at what the SPX did this past week, what we can see from this 184-hour chart here so we can get an idea of what the overall market is doing, right? Because it's always important to get an understanding of the overall market before taking a look at individual stocks and planning out our trades for that upcoming week, or at least that's how I personally do it. And I know a lot of people out there watching have found success doing the same thing. So the SPX, also known as the S&P 500, are the 500 largest or is the 500 largest companies combined into an index fund, right? The 500 largest U.S. companies combined into one, you know, fund, which is the S&P 500. And, you know, we've known over the past couple of weeks, really since the beginning of October, and the overall markets, we've been getting crushed in terms of stocks and obviously in terms of the over overall indices, right? We can see the SPX here, you know, was at 29.40 at the beginning of October. And then we tanked all the way down to around 23.46 right around Christmas in 2018. And from there, guys, we've been having, you know, nearly a month of recovery, right? We can see, you know, on the 26th of uh, November, or December, rather, we were at 2346, like I said, right? And all the way to where we are now at the close of the market this past Friday on the 18th, we were at around 2675, guys. So nearly a 400 point rebound in the SPX in the past about three weeks at this point, right? It's January 20th, and it's almost a month of straight recovery. And what we can see from the technicals on this 180 chart here on the SPX. Like I've been talking about, you know, in the past couple of videos, we broke through the resistance at around 2620. This was earlier this week. We then broke through another resistance at around 2635, which again was earlier this week. And now we can see that we're testing the resistance at around 2675, 2680, which is right here from a previous resistance and also under the 180 simple moving average, which has been a previous resistance as well as we can see from back in the beginning of December we got rejected here very strongly in the uh, middle to the you know more towards the beginning of November we got rejected very strongly as well and also in the middle of October we got rejected by the 180 SMA very strongly so at the point we are right now in the overall you know SPX guys we're at a strong resistance we're also overbought in terms of the RSI and this could be a potential 
potential rejection zone, right? We've seen, you know, a bunch of news that's kind of relieved us over the past couple of weeks in terms of the overall economy. You know, we've been seeing a ton of news with Trump, you know, coming towards a conclusion to the trade war with China. We saw the Fed saying that they're going to start, you know, becoming a little, a little bit more lenient with the interest rates this upcoming year. And another thing I want to talk about very briefly is yesterday we saw Trump go uh, make a live announcement about the immigration situation that we're seeing right now in the United States. And I'm not going to get into this in depth whatsoever. If you guys want to do research on that, go ahead. I'm sure a lot of you guys already saw this, but he wants $5.7 billion to build a steel wall, you know, blocking Mexico from the U.S. So what do you guys think about this? I know a lot of you out there, like I said, already know about this, already saw it. I personally was watching this uh, speech live. And again, I know a lot of you guys were watching it live as well. So drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this. $5.7 billion making a steel wall. Trump is 100% serious. He wants this wall. What do you guys think about it? Drop a comment. Let me know. So let's talk about, you know, a couple of stocks and ETFs now that I'm watching for this upcoming week very quickly. And we're going to also talk about the ones that people message me on Instagram about. So we're going to be getting into that right now. Let's do it. So the first stock that I'm watching this week, guys, or the first ETF rather, is going to be one by the name of JDST, guys. So JDST, this is a bear ETF to the gold future. So meaning whenever gold is going down in price, JDST is going up in price. So what do we notice in the pattern of the gold futures here is something very attractive. We notice, like I've been talking about in the past couple of videos, I know, you know, those out there that do watch my videos every day, you know I've been talking about this resistance on gold at around 1300 1295 to 1300 right? And I was talking about how we double-topped at this point, right? I made another video saying we triple-topped, and then we had a lot of trouble getting above that 1300 1295 1300 level. So what I wanted to see in terms of trading JDST is I wanted to see ultimately a break below 1285 which is right here. That was a very strong support. We got that, right? And ultimately, I want to see a break below 1280, which is slowly starting to happen right now. We haven't broken below it quite yet, but if we do break below it, guys, I can see gold potentially running back to 1270, which it would test the support on the 180 SMA. And if we breaks that, guys, you know, we can head back, excuse me, to the 1260 range and even the 1250 range. So, JDST guys that's at the top of my list this week and of course you know let's say we do sell off in gold all the way down to around 1275 and we miss that move on JDST and let's say it does hold that support here at the 180 SMA this could be a good opportunity to hop into JNUG which is the bull ETF so it all depends on what we're able to catch during the during the time period that we're trading right so you know me personally guys I'm very interested in trading JDST but what I would want to see is a little pullback potentially back to around $51 to maybe $51.50 because we can see the RSI is a bit overbought so I would like to see that maybe back down to around $45 to $50 level before taking a position in JDST so I'm going to quickly set an alert right now um, at $50 let us say $52 I'm going to set a create alert i'm going to set an at or below alert meaning that i want to see you know is jdst going to start pulling back and if so you know i want to be alerted when that does happen oh my god guys i just typed in jdst my mind is boggling so 52 dollars okay Let's see, if we pull back down there, that would be a good point to buy, in my personal opinion, especially since we had, you know, a 10% day. So if we do end up pulling back, you know, I'm going to be looking at the $52, $52.50 range in terms of uh, JDST. So that's the first one that I'm watching, guys. Another one that I'm going to be watching very closely, and this is one that somebody messaged me, uh, you know, on uh, Discord, not Discord, Instagram about is going to be you guys, guys, you guys, ticker symbol UG. 
AZ. And this is a natural gas-based ETF. It goes up in price whenever natural gas is going up in price. And we saw the big pullback that we did have in natural gas this past Friday or Thursday, I believe. If we look a little bit closer, guys, we saw the big pullback. It was on the 17th. We pulled back from 357 all the way down to 327. So a 30 cent pullback that opened up the margin on you guys. We bounced very nicely on the 180 SMA and now we're holding the 50 SMA as a support. So in terms of natural gas guys, you know what I want to see here is I want to see it hold ultimately that 340 level guys because if we break that 340, that's a break below the 50 SMA. That's a break below the support and this pattern that we're seeing right here of lower highs is going to continue but take a look guys if we break you know this channel to the upside which we could potentially do you know that could be a break of pattern that's going to be a break of pattern meaning that de or, uh, natural gas could run with the next resistance being at around 357 so if we break 340 guys up to 357 that's going to offer a nice chunk of margin on you guys let's see you know if this moves 3-4% back up to 357 since uh, you guys is a 3x leveraged ETF it's going to move around you know three times three percent so it's going to move around ten percent you know giving you guys around a ten percent margin in my opinion you know if we do end up holding you know that level on natural gas and obviously if we do do that we're going to be pushing up you know with the next resistance being at around let's say sixty one dollars guys so keep an eye in my opinion guys you know you guys is nice from 56 up to around 61 that's the next gap range you know, that it could potentially trade in. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of you guys, guys. Let's talk about some stocks now very quickly that I got DM'd on Instagram. So one of them was Apple stock. Let's take a look at Apple. And I am kind of, you know, iffy on Apple right now, especially since they are reporting earnings on the 29th. So, you know, we already know that Apple's earnings are not going to be good. We got the news a couple of weeks back that their revenue has been cut, right? Their, their, their revenue is going to miss what the expected is for the analysts. So we already know that as well with, you know, China sales being down, the Chinese economy is not doing too well right now. Apple products are not selling too well right now in China. And China is one of the biggest markets for Apple's products. So obviously, if China is not doing well as an economy, Apple's not selling well in China. What's that going to do to Apple stock, guys? Unless something crazy happens, you know, I think Apple is going to go down once they report their earnings in about a week and a half from now. So, you know, in my opinion, guys, you know, more on a fundamental basis and, and in terms of earnings, you know, I wouldn't trade Apple. But if we're judging on a technical basis right now, you know, if you do want to trade Apple, you know, obviously the market's been doing very well since the beginning of 2019, meaning that, you know, Apple has been doing very well as well. If we're judging off this 20 day chart, which is going to give us a snapshot, a snapshot of what's been going on, um, you know, this year so far, we can see, you know, Apple's been making higher highs, higher lows, and it's been uptrending in price, right? Very attractive chart here. But what I want to tell you guys and what I want to warn you guys about, other than the earnings report, that's coming out is the resistance that we do see right here at around 158 to 160. We can clearly see that on the 20 day chart. And if we go to the 180 day chart, that resistance is going to put us right under the 180 SMA. So this could be a rejection spot, guys, you know, based off the technicals and based off the earnings report, not going to be in Apple's favor, right? From what we know right now from the news and what we've gotten from China and Apple itself. So, you know, this is what I'm looking at in terms of Apple, guys, my little two cents, you know, I wouldn't really, uh, you know, I wouldn't really trade Apple. If anything, I would do a put option, you know, against Apple, maybe a month or two out from now, you know, that could be a good bet in my personal opinion, especially if they do get crushed on earnings, which I think they will. But we've seen it in the past where companies do terrible on earnings and their stock doesn't budge, right? It's weird how that happens. So that's why we just don't really know until it actually happens. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of uh, Apple here, ticker symbol AA.
PL. Not really interested in trading it, but, you know, if something crazy does happen, who knows, guys? You can't really, uh, you know, discount anything, especially with what kind of market we've been in since the beginning of October. So, uh, you know, another one that I'm honestly looking to trade is crude oil, the crude oil ETFs here, guys. And we know those are UWT and DWT. And this is one that I'm looking to trade, uh, you know, the both ends of the spectrum, meaning that I'm looking to trade a potential pullback on CL, which I think is very possible. And if we do get that pullback, I'll be into uh, in thinking about trading DWT, which is an ETF that goes up when crude oil is pulling back. And once we find support on that crude oil pullback, if we do get that crude oil pullback, which I think is possible due to it being a bit overbought here, we also pushed up to another higher high. So this could be, you know, a good pullback spot. You know, if we do get that pullback, find support on the 50 SMA again, you know, that is going to be a good entry point for UWT. So this, this week, guys, the four days that we do have to trade, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see what crude oil is going to do, right? And the beautiful thing about uh, the futures market is that we can actually track what crude oil is doing starting at 6 p.m. on Sunday, Eastern Standard Time, and on Monday, even though the market is closed. So if the market's closed tomorrow, we can still chart this, we can still see what's going on, and we can still plan our trades for the next day, which is why, you know, I like to look at the stocks, the futures, right, most of the futures on off days so I can plan my trades, guys. That's why, you know, there's no really, there's not really an off day because even on holidays, you can still look at the futures market. Come on. Come on, guys. Look at the futures market, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, that's what I'm looking at, guys. And, you know, of course, obviously, I'm going to be watching it tomorrow. If we do start to see that pullback, that's going to be giving me a sign to go long on UWT if we do end up holding that support. But if we end up pushing back up to here and then on Tuesday, you know, we start to see that pullback and we'll be extremely overbought, extremely overextended at that point. You know, that could be a good entry for DWT on the downside. Then if we start to curl back up, UWT entry, guys. So I hope you all understand, uh, you know, what I mean by that. And uh, in terms of inverse ETFs, guys, those are the three main ones that I'm watching, particularly JDST. I really like the pattern of the cup pattern that is slowly starting to form. And now let's talk about another ETF or rather another stock that got shouted out on my Instagram. I'm quickly going to pull this up, guys, because I'm trying to think of it right now off the top of my head, but I'm actually forgetting. So UPL, UPL was the ticker. Let's just take a look at UPL very quickly. What does this offer? Okay, so this is a penny stock. So I personally, you know, all you out there that do follow me on Instagram, on YouTube, on Twitter, whatever you guys follow me on, you know, you know by now I don't trade penny stocks, right? All the videos I make, I'm either trading, you know, larger cap stocks for swing trades, you know, these inverse ETFs, which are priced at around like $20 to $50 for the most part, you know, sometimes the $10, $15 ones, which I don't consider penny stocks, but I rarely trade penny stocks that are under around $5 because me personally, guys, you know, I consider a $3 stock a penny stock. I consider a $1, $2 stock a penny stock, sometimes even a $5 dollar stock a penny stock i don't know why but this is just how i view it so you know this one's 99 cents here it, it was up 30 percent this past trading day we got rejected by the 180 sma which is a pretty good sign for a pullback right but what i want to see in terms of potentially trading this but i'm probably not going to trade this but if you're watching this video for you that shouted this out you know what i would be looking for is I would want to see a hold above at least 90 cents here because, you know, we saw the 50 SMA. It was a support over this week here of this nice little consolidation. We pulled back below it, and that's when we popped, right? We popped up, got rejected, and now we're trading between this channel, between the 180 SMA and the 50 SMA, guys. We're trading in between it. You know, pretend like we're playing, uh, what's that video game called? I can't think of it off the top of my head. It's like you pull the thing back and you shoot and, and you go like on both the sides. You know, you know what I'm talking about? 
that is what this is kind of like. We're popping up, bounce, now we're heading back. So we want to see the bounce here. Let's see if we can see a bounce here before we start to push back up, opening up a nice entry point, right? So if we do end up seeing that, you know, at around $90 or 90 cents rather, that could be a potential, um, you know, entry spot for UPS. L. So that is what I'm looking at in terms of UPL. Another stock that was shouted out on Instagram was BAC Bank of America. So for all you out there that have been paying attention to the stock market, you saw that the banking stocks, a lot of the big name ones, reported earnings last week. We had Bank of America, we had Goldman Sachs, we had what else? JP Morgan, we had Wells Fargo. The four big ones, some of the four biggest ones, right? They reported earnings, and Bank of America and Goldman did very well, and that shot their stocks up like crazy. We saw Bank of America up like 9% on this day. You can see that massive green candlestick. Um, just to look at Goldman Sachs very quickly. You know, same thing here with Goldman Sachs. It shot up like crazy. And that's putting the banking stocks at a point, in, in terms of a technical analysis, at a point of being a bit overbought, right? We see, you know, this is a typical cup pattern right here. We're at the resistance point at around $29. We're peaking above it. So let's see if we're going to do a little cup and handle formation right here on BAC. That's what I personally think is going to happen. Honestly, I think we're going to pull back a bit this week in terms of BAC. We do see, you know, the uh, RSI is extremely overbought at around 77 right here in terms of this uh, 30 to 70 threshold. And if we do pull back here, guys, for a cup and handle, you know, let's say we get back to around $28 or something, that's going to put the RSI right around here at around 50. It's going to have, you know, it's going to be at a better point in terms of buying power. We're not going to have, you know, extremely, uh, extremely over overbought tendencies here like we do have now but if we do pull back here and slowly start to cup back up that's going to be a typical cup and handle pattern and at that point guys this could be a good position to get back into BAC maybe around $28 maybe around $28.50 and from there you know if we're getting in at $28.50 our goal to sell should be here with a potential re-entry if we do end up popping out of this resistance but let's say tomorrow we don't end up pulling back or on Tuesday rather let's say we break out of here that's going to be a good spot maybe to, to get in on the potential run, maybe to the $30 range on BAC. But again, I don't think that's too likely. I think we're going to pull back. But again, just the way the market has been going, we can't really predict it, guys. You know, we've never been able to predict it. And the state that we're in right now, absolute insane volatility, you know, anything can happen. So, Another one I want to talk about, just to quickly talk about this one before ending off the video, is Tesla, guys. Tesla is at a very interesting spot right now. We saw it was down 13% this past trading day due to about, what was it, like 7,000 jobs being cut. Was it 7,000 or 7%? It might have been 7% of the jobs cut or 7,000 jobs cut. I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but we saw a job cut in terms of Tesla. That sent the stock down 13%. Now we're holding around $300 level, which is where I want to see it hold for a potential trade this upcoming week, guys. So Tesla's honestly one of the top three stocks that I'm watching for this week. If we do end up holding 300, if we do end up curling back up to around 305, that's going to be a good entry point in my personal opinion we see the rsi is extremely oversold right now which is a good sign for a potential entry i think this news with tesla is going to fade away over the next couple of days you know meaning that the stock price could shoot up 20 30 dollars in a day we've seen that happen and i'm just waiting for that guys because if that does end up happening you know, let's say we do consolidate here, head into the 305 range, and we start to see it run a bit. You know, this could be a great entry point for back up to around 350. You know, opening up from 310, let's say we enter enter up to 350, that's around a 12% margin of profit. So Tesla right now, guys. Looking very good. You know, I think this news is going to steam over. And in that case, you know, if that does end up happening, let's say this news doesn't linger, I do see a lot of potential to the upside from here, especially since we dropped 13%, guys. You know, typically we do see bounce back days after stocks, you know, 
lose 13%, 15%, 20%. Sometimes we do see bounce back days. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. Thanks for all the support, guys. I really do appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.